to my shop. But I want to do a, I wanted to show these antique broad axes, especially this one, before I started to do a restoration on it. I'm always collecting old tools and usually they're they're in pretty rough shape when I get them and I restore them and use them and collect them and I I just love old tools especially old edge tools these were from the days that people actually used edge tools we don't use edge tools like we used to now we've got skill saws and we've got mortise machines and we've got sawmills and a bunch of stuff with motors on it planers we don't use hand planes like we used to so I've got a, a little faux hewing project coming up. It's for a fireplace mantle. And so I I picked up these broad axes actually years ago, but I, I don't often use them. So I'm going to try a little faux hewing technique with this antique broad axe, but it needs some work. Now, a broad axe will always be flat on one side and only have the bevel on the other side. And this one has a severely offset handle, which is great. This is actually the original sawmill. So for thousands of years before sawmills really came into being, which the for the circle mill, it was about the 1860s. So prior to 1860, uh, aside from a few like wind-powered or water-powered sash saws, which were have been in existence for hundreds of years at any rate, most timbers for a timber frame building would have been just, they would have chopped the tree down in the forest, cut it to length, and then squared it up with axes with a combination of different types of broad axes or even felling axes. But the, this, a broad axe like this would have had a, a huge role in squaring up that timber. Um, in fact, that's one way to, that gives you some clues when you're trying to determine the date that a building was built. In fact, if you look at the the videos that I did on the 1850s barn that we just restored, it was a hand hewn frame. So, what I like to look for when buying antique edge tools, I, I prefer forged tools to begin with, as opposed to a cast tool, e even though. They've been experimenting with casting better qualities of steel and even casting tool steels. And some of those cast tools can rival a forged tool, but I'm a traditionalist. I just prefer the forged tools. So you can tell this is a forged tool by the hammer marks for one thing. But another indication is there is a color change right right there and what that is is the body of the tool is made out of a mild steel and they have forge welded a piece of tool steel in as the cutting edge so what that does it gives you a, a very hard cutting surface that will maintain it its edge and the body is more malleable so you need an edge tool to be tough so it can't be too brittle uh, it, it needs to be hard enough at the edge to retain its edge and yet malleable enough at the body to not break so you would not want a cast iron axe for instance 
So that's that's just one thing that I like to look for. I like to look for that in my chisels, etc. And uh, th this axe is sharp enough you can shave with it. You can shave your arm with it. Um, I would not recommend shaving your face with it. That's why I haven't shaved. I, I, I'm just not going to shave with an axe. Okay. Here's just another little tip. Um, if you have to set an axe down in the course of of working, set it, set it down so that the bevel is down, so that the edge is actually off of the cutting surface, off of your work surface. It, it's just basic tool etiquette. I, I set this one down the wrong way, but but it's not sharp at all. So it's fine. Uh, so I'm going to sharpen this up, probably put a new handle on it, and put it to use. Oh, yeah, I, I like these two axes. I call this one Little Brother and Big Brother. Okay, that's it. <laughs>